In this final section, we're going to look at naming some polyfunctional compounds. So when we have multiple functional groups on a compound, how do we know what the parent is and what to base our numbering off of? What we're going to do is we're going to look at a series of some of the most common functional groups, and uh, they're going to be in order of priority. And based off of that priority, we'll pick um, our parent functional group, and then we have to treat our other functional groups as essentially substituents on that parent chain. So here's a basic table of some functional groups and their priority. So down here at the bottom is um, at least the lowest priority I've listed in this particular table, which is amine. And we go up to alcohol, ketone, aldehyde, nitrile, amide, acid halide, ester, and carboxylic acid with carboxylic acid getting the highest priority. So if we have a carboxylic acid and a nitrile in the same compound, the parent will be based off of carboxylic acid um, and we'll use the oic acid ending. The nitrile will be treated as a substituent, so we'll use the cyano um, prefix for the substituent. Um, another useful one to uh, make sure you're aware of is with the aldehyde and the ketone. If you need to treat that as a substituent, it's an oxo substituent. So using this table can really help you generate these names. And kind of as a rule of thumb for thinking about functional group priority, um, as the carbon gets more oxidized, you end up with um, higher uh, functional group priority. So the most oxidized carbon being carboxylic acid, that's why it's the highest priority functional group. So the best way to do this is through some examples. We'll start fairly simple and then we'll move up a bit in complexity. Um, in this first one, we have an aldehyde and a ketone. And if you um, Look back at that table, you'll see that the aldehyde actually is a higher priority functional group. So we'll base the parent off of that. And our parent chain is going to be these five carbons. We'll number it. And our parent comes from five carbons. It's pentanal. We use that AL ending. We're going to treat the ketone as an oxo substituent. And it's on carbon 3, so we'll do that as 3 oxo. We'll put our substituent together with our parent. We have 3 oxo pentanal. This next one's a little more complex. We have three functional groups. We have carboxylic acid, nitrile, and ketone. Well, our carboxylic acid is our highest priority functional group, so we're really going to base our parent off of it. And then our main chain is going to be this carbon chain that contains the nitrile attached and the ketone. So for our parent name, if we number this, you see there's six carbons, uh, six carbon carboxylic acid, the parent is hexanoic acid. We need to treat um, our other functional groups are substituents. So on carbon 5, we have an oxo group. On carbon 3, we have a cyano group. And on carbon 2, we have an ethyl group. So we'll alphabetize these based on the first letter. Um, our cyano comes first. So we'll start our name with 3-cyano.
Next is ethyl. Let's so write two ethyl. Our last substituent is five oxo. And our parent is hexanoic acid. And since the carboxylic acid parent is always on carbon 1, we don't need to designate a 1 in front of that. In our next example, we have two functional groups. We have an acid chloride and an amine. Well, based on our functional group priority, the acid chloride is the highest priority group. So that's going to be um, the main functional group for our parent. And then our parent chain is going to be this longest carbon chain. And we're going to have the um, amine attached. Let's go ahead and number our chain. Our carbonyl is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Our parent being an acid chloride with 6 carbons. It's derived from hexanoic acid. But because it's an acid chloride, we're going to drop the IC acid and change that to YL chloride. So that makes our parent name hexanoyl chloride. Next we'll take care of our substituents. We have a 2-propyl group. We have two methyl groups on carbon 3. We'll just write that as 3,3-dimethyl. Three, three, and on carbon 6, we have nitrogen as a substituent. We'll call this an amino group. Okay, now we need to alphabetize our substituents, followed by the parent, and we'll alphabetize based on the A of amino, M of methyl, and P of propyl. So we start our name, 6-amino, next we have 3-3-dimethyl, followed by 2-propyl, and our parent is hexanoyl chloride. And that would be the IUPAC name for this compound. Our next example is going to have an acid chloride in it as well, but you'll notice the difference that in this next example, the acid chloride isn't going to be um, the highest priority functional group. Here we have the carboxylic acid, which takes precedence as our highest priority functional group. Now we pick our longest carbon chain. And we'll go ahead and number that. That means our parent is octanoic acid. Our substituents, this group, since we have this carbon that's not part of the parent, a carbonyl, we call this a carbonyl chloride substituent. 
and usually we stick that in parentheses. We also have 4,4-dimethyl. Okay, now for alphabetical purposes, we use the C from carbonyl chloride, M from methyl, put our name together, substituents, we have 5 carbonyl chloride. Four four dimethyl octanoic acid is the parent. We do leave the space between octanoic and acid. In example five, first let's go ahead and um, pick our parent and find our longest carbon chain. Well, our highest priority functional group is the ester, and the best thing to do here is to pick this as our longest carbon parent chain. We can number this. So our, um, our parent is derived from hexanoic acid. Since it's an ester, it's going to be hexanoate. We also will have to start our name with this methyl group. But one thing to take note of here is this aldehyde is sticking off of the parent chain. This carbon of the aldehyde isn't part of the parent chain, so we can't call this an oxo group. What we call this instead is a formal substituent. And that's on carbon 4, and then on carbon 6, we have a hydroxy substituent. So to put our name together, what we want to do is, just like with any ester, we'll start with methyl. So we'll start with the R group on the ester. Next, we'll alphabetize our substituents. F comes before H, so we leave a space. We do four formal, six hydroxy, and then our parent, hexanoate. So if the aldehyde is sticking off the parent chain, treat that as a formal substituent. In example six, we've moved on to the cyclic compound and our highest priority functional group is the aldehyde. And if you remember back to looking at um, naming aldehydes attached to a cyclic compound, our parent here is sort of the cyclic ring with the aldehyde attached and we would name this as cyclopentane carbaldehyde. Okay, so since the aldehyde is our highest priority group, you don't want to name that as a formal substituent. It really needs to be part of the parent. So since it's a parent on a ring, our 
transparent cyclopentane carbaldehyde. For our ring numbering, the carbon with the aldehyde attached is 1. Number to give the lowest ring numbering. A number like that. Carbon 2 is an oxo. Carbon 4 is an ethoxy. Okay, now we just need to alphabetize our substituents, followed by the parent. We have 4 ethoxy, 2 oxo, and our parent is cyclopentane carbaldehyde. Okay, so this is um, technically the correct IUPAC name you would want to use for this. A lot of people will make the mistake of naming this as a formal substituent and the parent as cyclopentanone, but the problem is the aldehyde is a higher priority functional group than a ketone, so this really needs to be um, the parent. In our last example, we have um, a ketone and a carboxylic acid. But remember, we can't make the parent both um, a ring and a chain, but the carboxylic acid is our highest priority group. So it needs to be our main functional group, and this chain is going to be the parent chain. And this chain has four carbons. So our parent is butanoic acid. Now we have to deal with this group that's attached. And we're really going to have to treat this as a complex substituent on carbon-4. So naming this as a complex substituent, we have to give it its own numbering, and its attachment point is right here, so we'll call that 1 and 2. And on this complex substituent, we have a 2-oxo group. So this complex substituent is 2-oxo cyclohexyl and this complex substituent is on carbon 4 of our main parent so we need to stick that in parentheses and designate that it's on carbon 4 that's our only substituent we have to deal with um, if we had other substituents, we would alphabetize those in here. But now we just follow this up with the parent, which is butanoic acid.